Today I'm going to demonstrate a technique for painting your own backgrounds for your composites using the mixer brush. I've got a canvas here of 16 by 20. I normally start with a pretty good sized canvas because I'm not always sure what I'm going to use these backgrounds for. I use, I do a lot of compositing and painting for print competition and I may use these, these backgrounds for a variety of different things. So once I've painted them, they just go into my library and it's better to have them a little bit bigger and then I can always downsize them later. So the uh, type of images that I like to start with, I generally just go and grab some sunset sky pictures or pictures of, of flowers. You want something with a lot of vivid colors. I'll show you an example here of some of the types of images. I have a folder here that says images for painting backgrounds. So these are the kinds of images that would make good background paintings. You're primarily looking at them for their color palette. So here I'd get my, you know, my cyans and oranges, my, uh, my browns and golds and, and oranges and yellows here. And this one will end up to be primarily purples, a uh, little bit of oranges in there. Again, oranges and reds. So you're looking at the image, not about the image itself, but more about the color palette that's in the image. Thinking about once you uh, blended all of those colors together, what you might end up with. You might start out with an image and start blending it and find out that those two colors, once blended together, make a horrible combination. Oh, just throw it away. You know, it's it's all about just exploration and trying it and seeing what you get. So, again, just go grab some images. Some of these are from Pixabay. A lot of times, I just go out and generate some off of uh, Midjourney. It doesn't really matter what the source of it is. You're just looking for pixels and some color. So this particular one, I think it's a Pixel Bay image. Again, doesn't really matter. We're going to totally destroy it uh, with uh, the mixer brush anyway. Uh, so I'm gonna make a backup just uh, in case it really uh, goes bad and I wanna either grab a section of it and start over or I just wanna completely start over. In my library here, I have uh, collected or built tools of brushes that are my background mixers. I have background painters. I have mixers that are specifically designed for doing scenics where I don't totally want to destroy the background. I want to uh, take like a landscape or of some kind and I want to mixer it into a more of an abstract picture, but uh, I still want to maintain some of the original context of the landscape itself. So I have a set of brushes that I call my scenic mixers. And so that's in this category. But for this particular image, we're just going to grab randomly uh, some of these mixer brushes that I have. And we're going to start mixing these colors together. And we'll continue mixing until we get a combination of colors in the background that we like. So I'll grab this first one here. We'll go up to the image. First thing we're going to do, because we drop these things in in place and we have the setting that says always make it smart. First thing we're going to do is rasterize that layer. And so, because it will not let us paint on it if we don't. And then we will size up our brush a little bit here. And I obviously had my caps lock on because I can't see my paintbrush. And we will begin to blend some of these colors together and see what we get. So this particular brush I grabbed um, does a really good job of dragging colors around. I tend to like to, to do my lights into my darks, because uh, if you go the other way, you sometimes lose the ability to, 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 keep, to capture those lights. Some of these brushes uh, give you a lot of really bizarre, weird artifacts on your edges when you 
drag out to the edges so you want to be a little careful when you get done mixing to take a smaller version of the brush and go around your edges because you'll get these weird kind of flat edges. It is always a function of the mixer brush when you make it really, really large that you get things you don't necessarily want. So there's some great colors so far. Let's, um, let's grab something a little bit different. Let's uh, go over to this one and see what we can get. See what um, see what we can get with a little bit of this one. I'm going to make my canvas a little bit smaller here, away from the edges of the thing here. So I see I wasn't getting all of the edges there. It's probably why I was getting that kind of weird behavior. So I wasn't all the way inside. So let's. Go ahead and go back to that original brush. Not sure which one it was. And let's, uh, let's paint that out. So we lost a lot of our blue there. Have some nice oranges here. So we lost our blues. We're kind of like we're left with some browns, some golds, oranges. Have kind of a little purplish thing going on over here, but not much of our original blue. Let's see if we can bring any of that back. Okay, let's uh, flip over here to this brush and see what we can do. And then let's uh, go down here and get something that's sort of like a cloud brush. Let's bring these things up a little bit so we can see what our brush tips look like. This is a kind of a cloudish brush here. Smooth out some of the edges a little bit so we don't have a lot of hard transitions. Now the next thing I like to do is I like to make a copy of it, put that second copy into like soft light, um, maybe put it all the way up into like vivid light just to see where I have some really harsh areas that I would like to blend out. And I'll go ahead and make those adjustments on both the second copy and then go back here to the first copy as well. And then I will change that blend mode back to something a little more pleasing, but doing that high contrast, it gives me the ability to, to see where the image isn't blending very well. And now we can bring this back and put it in maybe in soft light or overlay and you see there we get some of the vividness, but we don't get, it's not crazy. So there you have it. That's, that's the image. We started with this image and we ended up with this particular background image. So 
Now we can take these two images and if you want to keep your detail, make a copy and merge those together and turn everything else off. And there you have it. We don't really need a background. Um, this was your this was your build process and this is the image that you ended with. So pretty simple way to make some backgrounds to add to your uh, library. The nice thing about it, once you have these images in your library, it's very easy then to change the color palette on those if you just throw a gradient map on top of this and say you wanted to um, change this to something with some say we wanted to get into some blues and we wanted to change it in some way to something a little bit different we could go over here to our gradient maps and here's like some greens and aquas or some t blues and tans or even some purples depending on your gradient there's not a lot of there's not a lot of variation in um, luminosity there in that particular uh, composites or that background, but you might find that some of your some of your gradient maps, uh, like this particular one, that's kind of interesting. Um, just throwing on that gradient uh, gives you a fairly interesting uh, second choice uh, to to add to it. But perhaps if we put it in a blend mode there's that gradient in a linear dodge mode now that's kind of interesting maybe pull down the opacity on it and we change that significantly see what gradients Let's go with something blue in the linear dodge mode. See, now that's really pretty. That gave you a really pretty. So we went from that to that with just a linear dodge at 58% gradient over the top of our original one. So once you have one, it's pretty easy to then just add others to your library with just adding some gradients onto them. But again, this is how you build it. Start out with an image, any image with lots of vivid color. Grab your mixer brushes, blend them until you're happy to bring back some of the vividness that you normally wash away with the mixer brush. Just throw a soft light or overlay on top of it and merge those together this is what you'll end up with and then you can further enhance that by adding some kinds of gradient maps over the top of them and then explore different blend modes with those gradient maps to see what you creativity you can come up with